Hello friends, welcome back to a new video that is MCQs on biophysical techniques and biological methods. Okay, and this is the first part of this series of videos on biophysical techniques and biological methods. Okay, so the first question is number one is UV spectroscopy is not used to quantitate the following compounds based on absorbance and the options are option A nucleic acids have absorbance peak at 260 nanometer option b nadph have absorbance peak at 340 nanometer or option c that is aromatic amino acids have absorption maxima at about 20 nanometer or option d sulfur containing amino acids have absorbance at 270 nanometer so which one which one is which one is not used to quantitate the following compounds based on absorbance by uv spectroscopy so the right answer is option d that is sulfur containing amino acids have absorbance at 270 nanometer this is not can be done with this uv spectroscopy we cannot quantitate sulfur containing amino acids with 270 nanometer by uv spectroscopy okay so this is the right answer is option d so let's move on to question number two that is proteins are separated in sds electrophoresis on the basis of their option a size option b charge option c amino acid composition option d charge and shape and the right answer is option a that is based on the size so proteins are separated in sds electrophoresis on the basis of their size okay so let's move on to question number three it is which of the following techniques yields the most information about the positional and special characteristics of all atoms in a protein so the options are option a automated edman analysis option b circular dyschromism spectroscopy option c magnetic resonance spectroscopy or option d reversible unfolding or refolding so the right answer is option c that is magnetic resonance spectroscopy so which of the following techniques this magnetic resonance spectroscopy technique yields the most information about the positional and special characteristics of all atoms in a protein okay so protein <clears throat> position proteins uh, characteristics can be done by magnetic resonance spectroscopy and we can determine all their atoms in a protein okay so let's move on to question number four here is a mixture containing two proteins having similar molecular mass but different oligomeric properties can be separated by option a sds page analysis option b native page analysis option c isoelectric focusing or option d both b and c so the right answer is option d that is both b and c that means both by native page analysis and by isoelectric focusing so a mixture of containing two proteins having similar molecular mass but different oligomeric properties can be separated by native page analysis and isoelectric focusing that is by both b and c so option number d is the correct one so let's move on to question number five so x-ray crystallography is and here the uh, <coughs> here four statements are given according to x-ray crystallography and we have to choose which statements are correct so the statement p is X-ray crystallography is based on the elastic scattering of X-ray or statement Q is non-destructive analytical techniques. Statement R used in determining the arrangement of atoms within a crystal or option S that is based on Bragg's law. So X-ray crystallography is option, option A, P and Q statement is correct option b r and a statement is correct option c p q r statement is correct or option d p q r and s all statements are correct so which one is correct about the x-ray crystallography so the right answer is 
ऑप्शन डी दैट इज पी क्यू आर एस ऑल स्टेटमेंट आर करेक्ट अबाउट एक्सरे क्रिस्टलोग्राफी ओके सो लेट्स मूव ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स दैट इज a mixture of proteins that is w x y z elute from cefford uh, x column in the order w x y z so the protein with maximum electrophoretic mobility on sds page will be option a w option b x option c y option d z and the right answer is option d that is z so z protein will become last and this z protein with maximum electrophoretic mobility on sds page okay so let's move on to next question that is question number 7 so here it is so sodium dodecyl sulfate that is sds is used while separating proteins by sds page because option a it helps in solubilizing of proteins thereby making it easier to separate or option b it binds to proteins and confer uniform negative charge density thereby making them move during electrophoresis or option c decreases the surface tension of the buffer used for electrophoresis or option d stabilizes the protein so which one is correct about the use of sds page in sds page uh, sorry use of sds detergent in sds page technique so the right answer is option b that is it binds to the protein and confer uniform negative charge density thereby making them move during electrophoresis from negative end to positive end okay so let's move on to question number 8 so what could have been the main tool in the purification of the recombinant enzyme and the options are option a ultra centrifugation option b affinity chromatography option c thin layer chromatography that is that is tlc or option d immunoprecipitation so which one is correct about the tool used for purification of the recombinant enzyme so the right answer is option b that is affinity chromatography is used in the purification of recombinant enzyme okay so let's move on to question number 9 there is sds polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis and the isoelectric focusing method for the separation of protein have which of the following characteristics in common so options are option a separate native proteins option b separate proteins according to their mass or option c require a ph gradient or option d none of these so which option is common in this sds page poly sds uh, page and isoelectric focusing so the right answer about their characteristics common characteristics is option d that is none of these options are correct about their common characteristics between sds page and isoelectric focusing so this right answer is option d that is none of these characteristics okay so let's move on to question number 10 it is in scanning electron microscope that is same to form an image of the specimen option a electron should pass through the specimen option b electrons are scattered from the surface of the specimen option c a thin film of heavy metal is evaporated or option d specimens are stained and the right one is option b that is electrons are scattered from the surface of the specimen so in in scanning electron microscope to form an image of the specimen electrons are scattered from the surface of the specimen okay so let's move on to question number 11 that is which of the following is not correct about freeze fracture technique and the options are option a it involves physical breaking of frozen biological samples option b fixation in glutaraldehyde option c involves vacuum sub, uh, sublimation of ice or option d cryoprotection with glycerol and the right answer about the freeze fracture technique which is not correct about the freeze fracture freeze fracture technique is option 
C that is it involves vacuum sublimation of ice. This is not correct, but the other three options are correct about the freeze fracture technique. That is this freeze fracture technique is involves physical breaking of frozen biological samples, it uh, fixation in glutaraldehyde and cryoprotection with glycerol. All these are correct, but the not which is not correct that is it involves vacuum sublimation of ice okay so let's move on to question number 12 the tertiary structure of protein is detected by option a x-ray diffraction or crystallography option b spectrophotometry option c electrophoresis option d chromatography so the right answer about the tertiary structure of protein is detected by option a that is x-ray crystallography or x-ray diffraction <coughs> sorry so let's move on to question number 13 it is which of the following methods could be most readily employed to identify tryptophan and the options are option a electrophoresis option b ultraviolet spectroscopy option c gel filtration option d analytical ultra centrifugation so the right one is option b that is ultraviolet spectroscopy so which of the following method could be most readily employed to identify tryptophan that is ultraviolet spectroscopy okay so let's move on to question number 14 it is an alpha helical conformation of a globular protein in solution is best determined by which of the following and the options are Option A, ultraviolet visible absorbance spectroscopy. Option B, fluorescence spectroscopy. Option C, electron microscopy. Option D, circular dyschromism. So the right one is option D, that is circular dyschromism. So a alpha helical conformation of a globular protein in solution is best determined by this circular dyschromism technique. Okay. Next question, next is question number 15. So, two double-stranded DNA samples that are identical with respect to their number of base pairs but differ significantly in their GC content can be separated by option A, density gradient centrifugation, option B, agarose gel electrophoresis, option C, dialysis, option D, oligo DT column chromatography. So, the right one is option A, that is density gradient centrifugation. So, two double-stranded DNA samples that are identical with respect to the number of base pairs but differ significantly in their GC content can be separated by this density gradient centrifugation. Okay. So, let's move on to question number 16. It is in a electrophoresis experiment at pH 5 show below. So, X, Y and Z refer respectively to like this. This is a electrophoresis experiment so <clears throat> let's <clears throat> determine which is x which is y and which is z among these samples from the negative end to positive end so the options are option a lysine alanine and aspartic acid or option b that is alanine aspartic acid and lysine or option c lysine aspartic acid and alanine or option d aspartic acid alanine and lysine so the right answer about the xyz <coughs> amino acid is option a that is lysine alanine and aspartic acid okay so let's move on to the question number 17 that is electrophoretic separation of rna molecule based on their molecular weights require a deter, uh, denaturant such as formaldehyde to be present in the gel system because option a that is rnas are sensitive to nucleases option b rnas are single standard and can form different secondary structure by base pairing or option c rnas are as usually present in high amounts or rnas are as usually small so which option is correct so the right one is option b that is rnas are single standard and can form different secondary structure by base pairing so electrophoretic se electrophoretic separation of rna molecules based on their molecular weight require a 
denaturant such as formaldehyde to present to be present in the gel system because RNAs are single standard and can form different secondary structure by, structures by base pairing and can interrupt the electrophoretic separation. Okay, so let's move on to question number 18. That is, which of the following reagents would be useful for visualizing DNA restriction fragments that have been separated by electrophoresis in an agarose gel and remain in the wet gel? So, the options are option A, ethidium bromide, option B, alpha P32 ATP, where in the ATP, the phosphate is <coughs> isotope uh, alpha uh, p32 iso isotope okay and option c that is diphenyl amine or option d that is p32 only p32 phosphate 32 so which one is the correct one so the right answer is option a that is ethidium bromide is the right answer so which of the following reagent would be useful for visualizing visualizing dna restriction fragments that have been separated by electrophoresis in an agarose gel and remain in the wet gel is ethidium bromide is used for visualizing DNA restriction fragments. Okay, so let's move on to question number 19. That is, a researcher is purifying a mixture of 60 kilodalton that is P60 and 40 kilodalton that is P40 polypeptides through a Cephardex Z G100 column so what will be the fate of these two polypeptides when they pass through the column so the option a that is p40 will run faster option b p60 will run faster option c always a 50 percent mixture of p40 and p60 will come out of the column or option d p40 and p60 will come out in a ratio of 3 is to 2 at any given time so which one is the right about the fit of these two polypeptides when they pass through the column of Cephardex G100 column? So the right answer is option B, that is P60 will run faster. So <clears throat> when a mixture of 60 kilodalton protein uh, polypeptide and 40 kilodalton polypeptide through a Cephardox is run through this Cephardox G100 column, what will be the fate of these two polypeptides when they pass through the column? The P60 will run faster. Okay. So let's move on to the last question of this video. That is the RF value of substances A and B are 0.34 and 0.68 when chromatographed on paper. So what is the ratio of distance moved after three hours? Assuming that neither substance has run off the paper. So the options are option A that is A is to B A is to B equals to 2 is to 1 or option B A is to B equals to 1 is to 2 or option C A is to B equals to 1 is to 1 or option D that is A is to B equals to 2 is to 3. So which is the correct answer about the their ratio of distance moved after three hours so the right answer is option b that is a is to b equals to one is to two so the rf value of this substance a is 0 0.34 and b is 0 0.68 so what is the ratio of distance that will be the double so <clears throat> a is to b equals to one is to two so this rf value is proportional to the distance covered by them okay so these are all 20 questions of this video in biophysical uh, on biophysical techniques and biological methods okay so thank you for watching this video